What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video with some recent news in the Disney Plus Star Wars universe. This information was alerted to me by a Patreon supporter and subscriber, Joshua M. Thank you so much, Joshua, for sending this along. This is really interesting information. For those of you that follow this stuff and as it pertains to key issue Star Wars comics. So yesterday, news came out that uh, they are reportedly casting Sabine Wren for the Ahsoka TV series that's coming out. So it's going to be really interesting to see who they choose, but uh, that's, that's a bounty hunter that is, is fairly popular within uh, the Star Wars community. She obviously was in Star Wars Rebels on Disney Plus as well, and uh, you know it sounds like they're going to make a push to, to make her a, a fairly uh, significant part of the Ahsoka TV series. And I wanted to go through a few uh, announcements and kind of some interesting points across multiple articles and then uh, talk about some key issue comics as well as some comics that maybe aren't on your radar or if you just want to read more about Sabine Wren there's a really good article I found that has some books and kind of other periodicals things like that that kind of goes into Sabine Wren's backstory origin and kind of canon and things like that so Let's go ahead and dig right in. So this again came out yesterday. Today is uh, August 12th. I think this is going to go live on August 13th. So uh, just yesterday, Disney reported, uh, and this is across multiple sources, by the way, so it's, it's, it sounds like it's going to be happening. But uh, they, they've already announced, obviously, that the actor from the live-action Aladdin movie will be playing Ezra Bridger. So it's a surprise to no one, really, that Sabine Wren is also going to be playing a part in Ahsoka. And if you guys remember, spoiler alert, at the end of the series finale for Star Wars Rebels, uh, we were left seeing Grand Admiral Thrawn and Ezra Bridger kind of go off into nowhere in a, uh, you know, in a uh, Star Destroyer and, you know, kind of lost in space. So my guess is that given the time frame where the Ahsoka TV series is going to be taking place, which is a few years after the fall of the Empire and Return of the Jedi, that we're going to be learning what happened to Ezra Bridger and uh, Sabine Wren was one of the one of the individuals going after Ezra Bridger to try and find him. So uh, it was kind of all but inevitable, as as the article mentions here. And in January, Rosario Dawson added fuel to the fire by liking a tweet suggesting Sabine Wren would appear in Ahsoka. And it, it kind of goes into her backstory here. But a couple of other articles that I thought were cool: uh, Screen Rant, which is a pretty reliable source for these kind of rumors and innuendo as to what's going to be coming to Disney Plus. Uh, they mentioned that the the role for Sabine Wren is not going to be kind of some bit role. It's going to be a pretty significant role, where she she is going to be uh, you know right right in line with Ahsoka Tano, and that kind of uh, is is it makes sense because Ahsoka Tano and Sabine Wren kind of had a friendship that we saw in the in the Star Wars Rebel series. So my guess is that it's going to be more like a sidekick kind of action. Uh, in in the in the at least in the first season for Ahsoka, where we're we're going to have a pretty major role for for Sabine Wren. So, uh, and what else we got? Uh, you know the the other interesting aspect was in ComicBook.com. They came out with its article as well. And you know one of the weird things about you know all of these new Disney shows coming out is the fact that you know the time frames for Star Wars Rebels and The Mandalorian and Ahsoka, they don't exactly match up right. And, you know, the, we saw the same thing with Dr. Aphra. There's Dr. Aphra rumors out there, and a lot of her um, adventures take place either pre-Battle of Hoth or right after Battle of Hoth. And uh, so I, I think that they're going to have to play a little bit with, you know, retconning the canon a little bit to make the, the timing work because The Mandalorian Season 2 uh, is where Ahsoka showed up. And uh, still on the hunt for Ad Grand Admiral Thrawn, and that's a few years after the Empire fell. Well, you know, there, there's just a lot of moving pieces there where they're going to have to figure out a way to kind of reincorporate Sabine Wren for post Return of the Jedi time frame in canon. So that's another thing that was brought up by that article that I thought was interesting. Now, as it relates to key comics, we all know about the two two major key comics. It's really Kanan the Last Padawan number one, and Kanan the Last. Uh, Canon number six and and so I'm going to show you those and kind of recent prices here in a second But before I did that I want to kind of mention key collector comics 
Uh, they're on Facebook, but they have an app, and they also have a website, keycollectorcomics.com, where you can search by series, by title, whatever, by hero, and it gives you all the different key comics within that universe or within that series or volume, and uh, kind of breaks down who the first appearances are, who the second appearances are, you know, all that kind of really interesting information. And this was an article that came out last year. Uh, it was just like a, a post that he made. And he says, I've received a lot of questions about canon number one and canon number six as to the first cameo versus the first full appearance. And I've talked about this in, in a number of videos. And early on, uh, as you know, the kind of the heat was was starting with the Rebels team and that, hey, these guys might show up in the Disney Plus uh, universe. Uh, canon number one was kind of always the big key because that was how it was labeled by CGC is it was the first appearance of the Rebels team and it was all labeled right there on the CGC label. Well, you know, the issue is canon number one really only has one panel and uh, and here's that panel. Uh, whereas in canon number six, you get the full team appearance and this is the, uh, a, a brief shot of the, the cover for, for, for canon number six and I'll, I'll go over it in a little bit more detail in a second, but Canon number six is really where all the action happens and you really get to see the full Rebels team in action. Whereas in Canon number one, it's really just one panel. So if anything, Canon number one is the first cameo and Canon number six is the first full team appearance. And since that time, just very recently in the last month or two, as I've talked about in past videos, CGC has updated their, their labeling. Uh, Canon number one is now only going to say the first appearance of Canon Jarrus or Caleb Dune. Uh, and then canon, canon number six is going to have the first full team appearance. So uh, I haven't seen any Canon number six issues with that updated label yet, but I'm sure it's coming. But I have seen the updated uh, Canon number one label. So it's only a matter of time before those hit the market if they haven't already. I just haven't seen one personally. But anyway, uh, I wanted to mention Key Collector Comics because they're a great resource for, hey, I wonder if this book has got some importance. And they usually know pretty well, especially with all the newest releases that are coming out, like High, High Republic, High Republic Adventures. They list all the first appearances that are coming for all those new issues. So it's, it's a really helpful uh, guide for anyone lo looking to collect key issue comics within the Star Wars universe and really for any, any comic line. Um, and I also wanted to go to Go Collect. I've talked about them in the past. I've got an old article. This is from November of 2020. And, it, and this article uh, is titled, Three of the Most Popular Star Wars Books in 2020. And they do mention Kanan Last Padawan number one. And you'll notice that Kanan number six is not mentioned. And that's because at the time, you know, Kanan uh, number one was kind of viewed as uh, a, big, a big key. And uh, this is back in November of 2020. And th they were saying that for a CGC 9.8, the, the value is around $220. And at the time, he said, unfortunately, when we look at the overall market activity of the book, it paints a pessimistic future. And uh, they're, they're predicting that uh, the fair market value is too high right now and that it's going to go down. Well, they, they were proven wrong. It hasn't moved up that much, but it has moved up. And so let's take a look at that right now. Um, so I pulled up uh, Canon number one, CGC 9.8, and there are a number of different covers for it. And the price will vary depending on which cover you choose. Uh, the most popular cover is this one, which is... And I'll, let me zoom in on it real quickly so you can take a closer look at it. But this is Canon number one, the most the, the standard kind of cover, and uh, it's got a really nice, uh, a really nice cover there with uh, some of the clone troopers, right as Order sixty six was happening, and Caleb Dune as he escapes, just like we saw in the Bad Batch. So, and this one again has the old label: first appearance of Canon Jars, Ezra Bridger, Chopper, Eris and Dula, Sabine Wren and uh, Zeb Aurelius. So that's the old label. It's, it's since been updated to just say the first appearance of Canon Jarrus. So uh, so that's that's that one. That, and that's the most popular cover uh, for the first printing. The second printing is very, very expensive though. Um, this is another cover right here that's got Vader on the cover. That's the BAM variant. That, that one goes for a little bit less, about 200. Um, this, this just sold today, August 12th, as of uh, the making of this video. That one sold for 375. This one sold for 265, 315, 250. Uh, there's another one that's a Scotty Young cover that's got kind of like a child's, you know, artistic style to it. Uh, there's another one that is the Plunkett cover. That's very, very expensive. That's the one in 25 ratio. So let me pull that one up real quick so you can see that one and how it looks. But yeah, this is the one in 25 ratio variant for Canaan number one, and this is a very expensive book. It's got a, it's got Canaan Jarrus there as well as. I don't, you know, it looks like the Emperor and his former uh, master and some, a clone trooper. I can't remember who that is there at the front of the um, 
of a book there. But uh, but anyway, that's the one in 25, and that's very expensive. That one sold for $800. Um, there's also a second printing that goes for uh, about 500 to 550. Um, let's see if I can find one. I don't see one that's sold recently, but but anyway, that you know, those are just a few of the covers that are out there. But for, for my for my money, I went ahead and got Canaan uh, just the, the standard cover of Canaan number one. So I, I've got that coming. That should be here soon, and we'll we'll take a closer look at that. So that's the first cameo appearance. The first full appearance is Canaan number six, and this book has gotten very very expensive. This one. Uh, the price has jumped here recently, just after this news just broke yesterday. Uh, this one just sold for 850 and this is, again, Canon number six with the first full team appearance. They've got the whole team on the cover there, instead of just Canon with his master when he was younger. It's got Eris and Dula, Sabine Wren, Zeb Aurelius, Ezra Bridger, and Chopper. So this is just an epic cover. And again, this is the old label. As you can see there, it's not... Uh, it, it doesn't have anything about a first full team appearance on there, but I, I'm, I'm assuming that's going to change. But that one sold for $8.50, and that's just the standard cover. There's no other co cover, cover variations that I'm aware of for this one. So this one has really jumped because of the really the first full Sabine Wren appearance. And there's been so much speculation that the price has been st steadily escalating to where it's easily eclipsed everything except for the Plunkett variant of uh, Canon number one. So those are the two big keys, depending on which covers you want for number one, and then uh, Canon number six is is uh, really the big one for if you if you're focused on Sabine Wren in this news. And so let's go back to talk about prices. And again, the prices have been jumping here recently because of the Sabine Wren news. So yesterday it sold for seven ninety nine, best offer accepted, and then today it sold for eight fifty. So uh, it could be as much as a hundred dollar difference in price. Uh, 710, 685, best offer accepted, 661, 670. So just in the last week to, you know, let's call it two weeks, it's gone from roughly 650 all the way up to 850 uh, based on this news that's just came out. Um, now that's if you want the two big keys. What are some other ideas as it relates to this? Because you know that Eris and Dula is going to be making an appearance, I would think, very soon. Uh, she also has a pretty uh, major role within a lot of the recent novels that have come out and she becomes a general and all that good stuff so i would assume that we'll probably see her as well uh, since she plays a, a major role as a general with operation cinder and kind of defeat trying to defeat the remaining forces of the empire after the death of, of the uh, emperor in return of the jedi so s some other ideas that you may you may want to consider they're a lot less expensive uh you got the star wars forces of destiny line of comics uh, there's a Forces of Destiny issue that's a, a kind of a one-off, a one-shot with Ahsoka and Padme on the cover. That one just sold for $86 in July. Uh, this one had both of uh, both of the cover variants. That one sold for $373. Uh, more recently, you've got a couple here. That one sold for $227. Uh, I think that you can pick up this standard uh, cover for you know $100 or maybe $150 now. But you know as early as recently as July 4th, it sold for $86 bucks plus shipping. So Let's call it maybe 150 bucks with some of the recent news that's come out. Um, the other, the other one that if you wanted to focus on Era Syndulla, you've got the, they've got a couple of different cover variations for another one-off that's Star Wars Forces of Destiny. Um, the standard cover is this one. That one just showed, sold on June 11th for 115 dollars. There's not any more recent data, so I apologize that I don't have any better data for you. Uh, but this is the the Virgin cover. That one sold for 130 back on June 8th. You can assume that those prices are way too old now. I mean, the comic market moves so much, and as news comes out, you know, obviously uh, Ezra Bridger news and the Sabine Wren news are not factored into pr to definitely the June 8th uh, data, but I can't remember when uh, June 8th, June 11th. I, I don't know when exactly the, the Ezra Bridger news came out, but I would assume it happened after those two sales. So I would assume that, you know, the natural progression of speculation within the comic community leads me to believe that if these these two issues were listed today, they would be a lot more expensive than $115 and $130 respectively. But I would th I would think, though, that these will be a lot less expensive because they're one-offs. They're not super key issues, but they have the nice Eris and Dula covers. There's not a lot of options for Eris and Dula other than the two books I've just mentioned and then these two if you want to have some some exposure to her. So now if you're not into buying graded comics and, you know, obviously you can get, pick these up raw. You can pick them up at lower grades and uh, the cost will be much more affordable. A 9.6, for example, of Canon number one, is more like 100 to 150 bucks versus $300 plus for a 9.8. So it, it, the, the price drops dramatically 
for these modern books once you go from a 9.8 to a 9.6 to a 9.4, etc. or raw. So keep, you know, just play, play with the grades or just get them raw depending on your budget. Um, now, if you don't care about collecting graded comics or getting these key issues and you just want to learn more about, about Sabine Wren, as part of the research for this video, I did find this article on utini.com uh, that is basically Sabine Wren related. Star Wars books you should read if you like Sabine Wren. So I'm going to put links to all of these different articles in the description for this video in the event you want to take a look at them in more detail. But uh, here is uh, some books in the collection. There's Rebels. Spark of Rebellion. It's a Sinistory story comic that's got some detail there. Uh, Forces of Destiny, which I just mentioned. If you don't want to collect the individual comics, they do have a uh, trade paperback volume uh, of all the uh, volume one. So that's another option that's available on either an Audible or uh, you know in paperback on Amazon. Uh, there's Forces of Destiny volume two. That's another one. Uh, Rebels: The Visual Guide. I'm assuming that's more kind of like an encyclopedic kind of uh, book. That's also available on Amazon. Uh, Star Wars Rebels, the art of the animated series. So that's another kind of inexpensive option if you just want to kind of get caught up on some of the different cool art and maybe some of the backstory behind the art. Uh, Star Wars Rebels, saving my Rebel sketchbook. I'd probably stay away from that one. That's probably just, uh, you know, a sketch fill journal type thing that's not really applicable. Uh, and then finally, if you if you don't want to collect the, the Kanan comics because they've gotten so expensive, but you want to read the Kanan comics, there is a hardcover omnibus collection. I have that, and it's great. It's great to read the books. Uh, someone like me who's a nerd and wants to read it, uh, you want to read about Caleb Dune's origin story and how he progresses to become Kanan and the Rebels team. That's a really inexpensive way uh, to read that series without having to buy the individual comics, which, you know, again, a lot of them are expensive, even raw right now. So... That's a really good option, uh, and that, again, all these are available on Amazon. So I'll put links to all this information. Let me know if you have any questions. I just thought it was some interesting information. Thank you again to Josh M. for passing along that news. I hope everyone's doing well, and thank you so much for watching.